Good evening, everyone. We're going to call the regular city council meeting. Uh, uh, for June 1st, 2022, to order. I'd ask that all please stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance and we'll have invocation by Old Lady McDowell. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, a nation under God. Lord, we thank you. We come again, praise and thank you for us to see another day. We ask you, Lord, to come into our council chambers. Bless each and every one that is present on tonight. Bless this council. As we conduct the city of my business in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Roll call, please. Yes. Motion by Alderman Barron, second by Alderman McDowell for approval. Regular City Council meeting minutes for May 18th, 2022. Questions? Call? Yes. Yes. Authorization to claim account for building. Yes, ma'am. I make a motion that we approve the authorization to use an account in West Cambridge for June 1st, 2022, which reads as follows. Corporate, $303,151 even. Water and sewer, $203,505.20. Solid waste, $5,464.88. Motor fuel, $121,427.20. Mark and single living complex, $17,116.13. Roll rate, $3,582.10. TIF AC Highway, $1,743.75, which gives us a total of $655,990.26. So 26 cents. The bank will check adding up to $6,352 even, which gives us a grand total of $662,342.26. Second. Motion by Olin Lady Hampton, second by Olin Barron for approval of Silver's authorization plan. Question? Roll call. Alder Lady McDowell? Yes. Alder Lady Hampton Hauser? Yes. Alderman Barron? Yes. Motion carried. Any special presentations this evening? We'll go over to the city attorney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the council, and members of the public. With respect to the city attorney's report, it appears under 8. Under 8A, we have a proposed resolution approving the extension and renewal of the reproclamation and declaration of the continued local state of emergency within the city of Markham and approving the mayor's determination regarding modifications to in-person meetings in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, June 1st, 2022. Mayor and Powell. Yes. I make a motion that we approve resolution number 22-R-682 as read by the city attorney. Second. Motion by Owen Barron, second by Olivia Hampton for uh, approval resolution for the extension of the renewal and reproclamation declaration of the local state of emergency city of Marco as read. Question? Oh, no, sorry, roll call. Alderman Barron? Yes. Alderman Lady McDowell? Yes. Alderman Lady Hampton Hauser? Yes. Motion carried. 8B will not be uh, presented this evening. I hope to have the documentation ready for presentation at the next meeting on June 15th. I have no other matters under 8C, D, E, F, or G. And if there are any questions, um, please ask. But other than that, I have nothing else. 
Thank you. Well, I'm a city clerk. We just have two flyers this evening from the Marco Public Library. Um, and I'll just read sign up now. The dates are June 20th through July 28th. The time is 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. for grades K through 6. And it's join us as a summertime fun. Our program is a six week incentive based program encouraging children from kindergarten up to sixth grade to spend time reading throughout the summer months. STEM activities, games, prizes, and movies. Then um, another one is the 2022 Summer Reading Kickoff. The Markham Public Library presents to Infinity and Beyond Space Party. Dance performance by Culture Shock Chicago. There'll be food, drinks, music, a bounce house, and games for young ones. That's June 18th, which is a Saturday, from 12 to 2 p.m. at the Markham Public Library parking lot. That's located at 16640 South Cassie Avenue in Markham. That's all right. Okay, thank you. Okay, over to the mayor's report. I have a few items tonight uh, just to mention uh, things that are going on around the community. Um, one, I want to mention uh, if no one's been down uh, as of late to the area of 159th and Crawford, uh, that intersection's being, uh, it's been redone by the state. It's been a process over a number of, of years. Uh, that they've been working on it and it's starting to come together. Um, uh, we're working on making sure that we keep the, the medians cut um, so it looks pretty nice like the west of 159th. Um, I am going to be meeting with IDOT officials uh, about the upkeep and uh, trying to make sure that we're getting the funding for doing additional work. So I'm way past due with that. In the meantime, we're going to make sure it looks nice. Uh, that's another uh, area that we can be proud of in the community uh, that looks nice, just like we've kept up to Clover Works, and they did look nice down there as well. And, uh, certainly, we haven't been manicuring it like I'd like because we have to keep up with the rest of the community with all this grass. So, at least we keep the trash up out of that Clover Works so it doesn't look distasteful when you're coming off of the expressway. It looks uh, presentable when you come into the community. I can definitely say that our clover uh, is is far uh, better than the most uh, because we've really been working hard at it in the last few <coughs> years. So uh, we're we're constantly upgrading what we need to do with public works and uh, things with grass and and that for the summer. So we're working very hard at that. Obviously, we're still catching up just with grass and rain uh, has been off and on, but uh, they're, they're, they're making their way. Same thing with vacant properties. And still, that's been a, a progress or a process over the last several years. Uh, we, we have just uh, made good, uh, good, good steps uh, with, with all of that over the number of years that we've worked at. And we're still working hard to make sure that we have an organized effort. That is something that I think that we just have to continue to work on. I've explained that. Uh, you know, we, that, that's a part of the management that I've had to work with the existing uh, leadership over there about how we are consistent and we have a methodical way, a good mannerism that we're keeping up with. So I just wanted to mention that. One of the things, if you have not been down to uh, the Fair Play grocery store, uh, I strongly suggest it. Uh, I know that I went in there last month. And uh, actually, I was going back and forth over a number of months uh, because there was some woes back and forth about trying to make sure that uh, we, were, we were doing the construction processes down the right. So I was, I had no idea how it was going to look, um, but I know I was going back and forth with um, the, the, the building department and code department about making sure that we were doing things right. And uh, got calls back and forth, and, and those are the woes of of doing business uh, where you, you're trying to make sure it's getting done right, correctly, and follow all the rules. And then you have this nice jewel that winds up at the end of it uh, because it, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, you, you wouldn't know any different than any 
grocery store anywhere in uh, in, the, in the Southland. It's a beautiful store. They made a great investment. So one of the things came to mind. I wanted to congratulate the city council because you all had the courage to when when they thought of possibly having to not get a new lease down. When you all had the courage to say, well, we're going to see what we can do to try to find a way to subsidize what's going on down there, and you did. And so they gave that money right back and reinvested into the community. And so kudos and congratulations to the Market City Council, because you all can take the credit for that. That still looks the way it does, because you trusted uh, in them, and, and we had a good faith relationship. So um, I know that um, the agreement we had will eventually end in a year or so, something like that. But, uh, but it was it was worth it, and yeah. now we have uh, some other things that I know in the future that will go with it. So make sure you get down there. I was out of town for the Wiener Mobile. I would have liked that. That's been around since I was a boy. So um, that's an old Wiener Mobile uh, that they had down there that uh, I thought was good for uh, PR and things like that. So if you get a chance, let's encourage people to shop Mark. And now let me say this. The conversation that I had at the shopping center, I'm sorry, the, the, the grocery store. Um, if there are some options and, and they don't have enough healthy options for you, and you eat a certain way, you need to let them know. Uh, they, you know, sometimes they only put things on the shelf because that's what this, the skew is hitting and that scan bar scan is hitting, and they're going to sell what's there. But if you see something or you don't see something, it needs to be there. I told them. I'm a diabetic. I, I eat certain things that I don't like. I want non-sweet items or sugar-free items and uh, low-carb items, and they will uh, supply them. So let them know so we can shop here in town. Uh, I know that um, I'm having I'm going to have talks with the police department about making sure that we continue uh, during our, our summer months. I know that they turned up patrol in the city, but. Uh, we'll need more down there to make people feel comfortable and run people off that shouldn't hang out in those type of things. So just had to elaborate about the shopping center and uh, to think there's good things in store. Uh, sometimes you don't see anything. You're like, well, it still looks vacant down there. Well, there's, there's some things coming in, that's for sure. Nobody, uh, well, they, they had to wait a long time for DDs and now they're down. So I hope people are patronizing them as well. Over to uh, something I will elaborate on a great deal tonight. I know that there'll be some mention uh, from the council and uh, I'll give further report later myself, but I know that Mr. Champion and uh, Ms. Khalil are on, on the uh, Zoom call tonight to talk about the, uh, the trip out west that we took with the commercial and industrial retail conference that we went to. And uh, they can talk about that a little bit tonight but we have yet to really do a rehash as a team. We had several meetings as a team before we left. Uh, we had a lot of things shipped out there ahead of us and our booths and different things that we set up and the IT team, and everybody else, the, the other people were here on, on, on site and uh, just representing Mark in a great way. And it was a lot of work. Um, so uh, I don't know, I don't think any of us really had any real downtime from the time we got there. We were in that convention center, putting things together and making sure things were right. And it, it really paid off. A lot of people complimented us. A lot of people came by and said, gee, I wish our city would do this. Uh, that much I'll say before I let them talk. But uh, it was a proud moment to be part of it. And I think we made a couple people a little envious of us. And uh, proud of that, that uh, in, a, in, a, in a nice business way, we didn't take people envious that we were professional and we were well represented. So again, uh, I congratulate the team and their hard work. And I'm proud to, to be a Markhamite uh, when in moments like that. And we go way out west, no one knows us, but everybody wants to know us now. So, uh, you know, thank, thank, thank all of you. Uh, an another matter that um, just before we went to conference was the, uh, uh, I want to say, I always say it, I want to say, you know, uh, we had the, 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 the event where we had planted the tree for the green earth, and it's, it's Nordson, that's the proper way to say it. We made history in the 
uh, in the planning of a lot of trees here to, to sort of move the person the Chicago region, region to uh, plant the, the uh, I think it's, I can't tell, Mr. Champion will say it for me later, um, what the, the name of it was, will be, uh, I can never say it right, but uh, the, the tree planting that we did was historical that we're going to be the first that ever did it in the area. And uh, people don't realize how important it is. I know that we've gone through this thing where we were cutting trees, but they were all bad trees, weeds and things like that. So it kind of gave us a break. We're, we're talking about trees in a bad light, but um, but we went down there and we, we, we planted new life. So uh, I think that was a good event. Uh, we attended it and uh, a lot of people came out uh, that were supportive. A couple of last items I wanted to mention. Uh, we we have put our banners, uh, and we, we're starting, we started on the Kedzie Parkway and uh, we'll work on the east side now uh, to celebrate Juneteenth, um, something that has taken uh, a lot of growth in the last several years uh, at the state level and even at the federal level to recognize Juneteenth and uh, market is really its part to uh, celebrate the, the heritage of uh, Juneteenth. And so we've got banners out on June 18th. We'll have uh, a food truck festival here to uh, to commemorate some of that and celebrate out front here at City Hall. And we'll have a couple of little events out front, but uh, just to give some recognition and respect to the day. Um, so we're, we're doing that just as we have other festivals planned this year and other uh, events planned from the city. The uh, Park District's going to be having its grid competition. They never asked me what they want to do on Father's Day, and now they want to put grid. So I guess I'm going to have to get a barbecue grill. Get a grill. <laughs> so, but uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, they, they mean well. They always come up with good ideas. So we'll, we'll put a car show or some type of competition together. They always come up with some creativity. And then, of course, there's some camp uh, things that are going on for the young people and kids this year over the park district. Uh, encourage your kids to get involved with that. And then we will have our summer uh, youth program for promoting work and uh, those to get exposed to uh, the work field and the work industry field. So get a hold of uh, the park district has been our point uh, place where we send them to to uh, manage that effort for the city. Uh, so we have a good cooperation from the park district. So I tried to say everything in three minutes or less. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that concludes the mayor's report. I will go over to Mr. Champion, and uh, I imagine he'll yield some place to Ms. Khalil as he In the council, mayor, and the city of Markham. Mayor, I just want to kind of circle back a little bit. I want to talk about um, the, um, you mentioned about the Nordstrom's group uh, Green Earth Foundation. I just wanted to kind of speak to that just a little bit more. So the city of Markham did make history um, with the planning of the first public Milwaukee tiny forest in the Chicagoland area and in the Southland. Um, the city of Markham should be very, uh, very proud of that. Um, ideally, um, this is, ideally this is suited, this type of planning is suited to encourage biodiversity and increase um, canopy, canopy, tree canopy in urban areas. So we're really happy and grateful to the Nordstrom Green Earth Foundation for selecting the city of Markham to plant the first tiny forest. So kudos to everybody that came out and, and volunteered. I know we had some volunteers from um, the um, school district 144. The kids were out there and getting some good um, experience about um, biodiversity, so that was uh, really a big deal. So I want to go into um, just real quick. Want to talk about um, just the, our ICSC conference a little bit. Uh, I want to thank um, all the team that went out. Um, the you know the the members from the council, the mayor, Sonia, Rick, and even the individuals that were working behind the scenes to make this uh, all come to light. Even Christina. Want to want to talk about the importance of um, being a part of this international conference of shopping centers. Um, if Markham is going to be a regional player on the uh, economic side, these are the type of conferences that we really have to attend. I know I talked to all the women 
uh, Hampton earlier. I know that there's another conference um, that's going to uh, ICSC conference in Chicago. Sonia and I talked about it as well with all the women Hampton. Um, it's going to be at Navy Pier uh, in October. So we definitely want to make sure that we continue to show some um, presence from the city of Markham. Um, some of the takeaways um, from the uh, conference itself, um, we had the opportunity to meet with developers, which is a big deal. Those developers have relationships with a lot of the retail and rest restaurant um, businesses across this country, especially some of the larger chains. And one of the, um, one of the, I know we had some scheduled meetings and uh, thank you, Sonia, for setting up a lot of those meetings um, that we had with some of the um, uh, businesses there. We met with um, uh, a coffee supply chain company. We met, met with de developers, like I mentioned. We also um, wanted to make sure, I know the mayor mentioned just a moment ago, talking about healthy options. That was one of the things that we scouted out. We wanted to make sure that we were targeting um, the type of um, businesses that would support healthier options for, for our residents in the city of uh, Markham. So um, one of the things that I think is important is that uh, as a team, I know the mayor, we, he mentioned it a moment ago, we are going to um, sync up uh, sometime next week to talk about some of the takeaways from the conference. One of the things that I just want to highlight just very quickly, I don't know if you can see this, but we had, we had some beautiful uh, messaging and promo items from the city of Markham. And we there was a nice, um, I think you can see that there's a, th this particular uh, messaging was, talk about, was talking about um, how a, a perfect location to grow your business in Markham, a perfect location to grow your business in Markham. I think that we all did a fantastic job um, with individuals that visited our booth. We got some great reviews from some of our peers in the Southland region in particular, um, talking about how professional um, the booth was and, 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 and some of the promo items, but we were really excited and enthusiastic about just making the right connections uh, at this particular conference. We have some follow-up uh, meetings scheduled. Individuals are circling back right now, emailing, following up, wanting to make sure that we stay on their radar to help grow our business in Markham. And I, I'm going to say this again, in order for the city of Markham to continue to move forward, we have to continue to um, have a presence at a conference like this, especially from a regional standpoint. We want to make sure that we are not only um, going out to help grow our businesses, but we want to make sure that we're retaining businesses as well. If we have national national companies and businesses here in Markham, a lot of those companies, a lot of these restaurants are, um, they attend on the ICSC conference. So we want to find out what trends are going on. We want to find out um, um, if there's uh, going to be closures because a lot of times you find out a lot of inside information from a lot of these uh, national chain stores um, they will let you know if they're closing stores and where they're going to be closing stores at, if they're opening uh, new stores. So we want to focus on retention as well as growth as well. And I know that next week we will all get together as a team and kind of uh, sync and talk about some of the takeaways uh, from the conference. But I'm really uh, proud of the team um, that, um, that we assembled to go out. Um, we kind of got into the race a little late, but it all came together in the end. And kudos to everybody that made this, um, um, you know, a successful uh, ICSC uh, 2022. And that concludes my report, Mayor. All right. Did, was there anything to yield to Mr. Widow or no tonight? Or is that going to be later? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yielding anything to Ms. Sonia tonight or is that for later? Hey, Sonia, did you want to add, add and just add to it a little bit, Sonia, if I miss anything? Sure. Um, good evening, everyone. I just want to say what a success ICSC was. Um, our city received many compliments um, on our booth and our presence. And I'm really excited for what's to come for Markham through ICSC Vegas um, with the new vision that the mayor and the city council have. Okay. Well, we'll get, uh, we'll be rehashing everything and regrouping. Uh, the next week or so with uh, more for the community to know. 
what's up and coming. So we'll get together as a, a team. And again, congratulations to everybody on a great, great job and well represented. So thank you. With that, okay, that's the end of the report. We'll go over to all the math reports. Good evening, Alderman Mayor. Good evening, Mayor. Uh, I just wanted to compliment the all the man the, the uh, uh, flex today. They look very nice uh, along Kedzie Avenue. Uh, we uh, went through uh, a holiday weekend. It was very uneventful. How about that? Uh, so, uh, <laughs> you know, people food stay stand, water fire stand. Um, we're still work. I'm I'm still working on. Uh, I've got properties that. Some need to probably be demolished, and others need to be. We need to do, do, finish the research to figure out who owns the properties. Uh, there's actually quite a bit of interest uh, with some of these properties by other people. So, if we could, uh, if we could advance this along, I think that uh, it's going to make the community look so much better. Right. Um, just a word of caution, kids are out of school. So, you know, don't think that they see your car. Okay. Uh, be careful. Uh, you know, we need to, uh, one of the things I'd like to see public works do is painting that white line at all the stop signs. It really does catch people's attention. And, uh, you know, usually we do it for the kids going back to school, but kids being on the street, uh, I just like to see us do it now, if it's possible. Well, yeah, it'd be a good time to do it. You know? yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think I've heard it's for. I mean, right now with with grass and everything else that we're doing, but, um, we can get to I it. think you guys could probably do a ward a day. Yeah. You know. So, um, other than that, Mayor, um, I uh, I understand you people might understand uh, this conflict that we're attending, but you know, if we're going to go to the next level, <coughs> I was asked to go because I'm not a good traveler. <laughs> <Me So, either. laughs> and also, I have a family reunion coming up. So, right. uh, but I, I support I support everything that's done. Oh my. Uh, and I'll, and, I, and I, we, we do, if we want, if we want to, we're changing everything commercial and industrial in town. Yeah. And it's going to take a while and nothing's going to be done overnight, but we need to attract new faces, new businesses, and that will solve, that will help us with another problem we have, which is real estate taxes. Yeah. Because the bigger the tax base, the lower the burden will be on the homeowners. Right. So, you know, I just want people to, you know, they complain about their tax bill, and we're actually trying to do something about that. But, I mean, we're not consulted. We're not consulted about putting your taxes together. The only thing that we do is we have to submit to the county our budget. And all the other, the other 22 taxing bodies don't consult the city of Marco. And we have, we have no say in it. And one other thing I wanted to bring up, I, I don't know how many people are listening. There seems to be, there's a misconception about what easement is on, on your property. Um, and I just went through an extensive uh, program with the CUDD and water reclamation. Uh, I gave up another 25 feet of my land. Didn't give up the land. I gave up the easement rights. And that is so that the new ditch can be maintained. Uh, I'm still responsible for that land. Um, most of the most of the easement rights, like and mine, is basically the the fourth one is basically the only one that has open drainage. Yeah. And like you know, people think that the, the culvert that is underneath their driveway 
belongs to the city of Marble. It doesn't. It's your culvert. And when it fails, you know, uh, you have to replace it. Uh, some, some people have had easements in the back of their property, and that is for the power company and any other utility company that needs to get in there and do any maintenance or fix it. Um, the one exception is, is that uh, there might be some areas in town where there's been a, a, a dedicated alley that is that was never put in. Now that would belong to the city of Marco. But the other easements, you didn't lose that property. And the best way for you to understand that is to look at a, at a survey of your property. And it's going to show you how far your property goes. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have this discussion in the summer a lot with people, uh, basically over culverts and stuff like that. I tried, I tried to assist people. Uh, Public Works has tried uh, to help some people along, which we will continue to do. But uh, but that property and that culvert belongs to the homeowner. <coughs> Thank you. I'll just mention that one of the things that has been my goal is precedent, um, but I'd like to see it happen eventually. Is that I would like to eventually citywide start to work on culverts and ditches in terms of the clean out effort. So we team up citywide and really go after that. You know, just uh, in, in every part of the community. And, and then you know we can we can definitely just as you were trying to make it clear, the other boards can make it clear about what the easement situations are, what the sidewalk issues are, because I you know we get them all the time. So those are the things that we go back to the board meetings and talk about about where the responsibilities are and where we could just be better about you know being in a partnership with our community about where the funding can come from, where we can use the block grant money. To help with some of the ditches, the culverts, the sidewalks, some of the trees that are on the easement. Or, I'm sorry, on the street side of the sidewalk. And, you know, we, we constantly have it all the time where, you know, interfere with the sewers and you know, we get all the after just went through that. So uh, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, one thing I will mention, as far as I know, we haven't, uh, Tom mentioned him yet. I think he's got um, a lot of the speed bumps. And so I do have a list. And some of them, I don't have them. Uh, once he's done this week, I want to try and see if we can get a couple of streets done next week and start putting them out. So I do have a few of you give these streets to start with. So um, if you don't, you know, if you're not one or two or whatever, you, they're going to be putting them out in pieces because we're trying to catch up with other people. So, but I think it's important. So without the ladies in point, good evening, all the way ahead. Well, good evening, Mayor. Good evening. Of the city of Markham as a whole. Um, I, I had my list here and I had it, you know, in the order that I was going to go in, but I think I'm going to mix that up a little bit because I just want to iterate as well in reference to our easements. Uh, thank you, Alderman Darren, uh, for elaborating on exactly how the easements and the culverts actually work. I do uh, have to say to Ward One, we have been in the easements the abandoned homes, the, uh, uh, the lots as well this week, uh, working on uh, cutting those as well. And what I do uh, express to the homeowners or even if they're not the homeowners or whatever, the investors of that particular property is that they must maintain it, uh, maintain the easements as well. So I think it's a matter of just trying to educate uh, individuals like Alderman Baring was just stating to to let them know the responsibilities that they have as well coming coming into a, 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 a home ownership or even as a, even as a renter that they are responsible for that. But what we're doing again, uh, Mayor, which we've been doing for the last three years, is trying to clean up our easements areas as well. And of course, we get a lot of rain, uh, so you know that just uh, tumbles on top of it, but please be patient. We are trying to handle that. And we do work with a small crew. And then I always have to say, Mayor, 
It didn't grow up like that size overnight. So please don't expect us to get it down overnight. It takes time. Exactly. We have public works, they work for the entire city. They don't just work for Ward 2, Ward 1, Ward 3, or Ward 4. They work for the entire city. So we have to be a little patient with them, and I appreciate you all for doing that as well. Uh, moving on there, uh, last week we had a couple of shootings in Ward 1, random shootings in Ward 1, uh, individuals traveling through the city of Markham and just decided to shoot up some homes in the city of Markham. Uh, from my knowledge, you know, it, it never had ever been to this extent that we had uh, three homes in my ward completely shot, well, not completely shot up, but received bullet holes. So it's a domino effect. Every time something happens, it's always a domino effect behind everything. Now the homeowner is distraught. Now the homeowner has to actually figure out how to pay for that or submit it to the insurance company. Now they have to pay their deductible. Now the insurance goes up. It's such a domino effect. Um, so I did have uh, a conference, a conversation with our deputy chief and um, expressed to him exactly what the homeowners are actually going through, those who are the victims of the shooting. And we're, and of course, I informed them, you know, it's still under investigation. We're still trying to figure out exactly what transpired, why did it happen, or whatever the case may be. But I do want to say, if you do have cameras, if you do have cameras on your home, please, if the police officers come by or investigators come by and need to look at your video, please let them look at your video. I don't care if you need to call your lawyer to get proof, to get, get, get the authorization or whatever the case may be. But we can't solve these issues and these problems that we have on our own. It takes all of us as a village to make sure that we can uh, are rid of the uncomfortable feelings that we actually have, not only in my ward, but for the entire city of Markham. So please, uh, you know, give up the uh, video. Um, number two, Ward 1, we are having a bingo day. On June 6th and June 9th, the first uh, Monday and the first Thursday of each week, each week, uh, uh, the first Monday of each month, we will be over at Ward 1 at the Martin, uh, King Park, uh, King Park, but we will be in the new gymnasium and we'll be having bingo. So it's going to be on, again, June 6th and June 9th. Come on out for games, refreshments, prizes, and fun. And the time will be from 11 to 1 p.m. So please be expecting to see this in your doorway. Uh, uh, not in the mailbox, but be in your doorway or whatever. Please get it out and look at it and come on out and just have a little good time with us. Okay, number two, the trip to Vegas for the ICSC was an awesome trip. I think we did a lot of good uh, um, uh, networking. And the most important thing of that trip was because we do have a comprehensive plan there. And this does fit into our comprehensive plan on how we want our city to look and move forward and with new businesses as well. So the trip was an awesome trip and I can't wait for us to sit at the table, put together our information that we received from very reputable businesses and move it to the next level and see if we can make sure we can get some of those businesses into our community as well. Uh, I received a couple more phone calls from seniors in Ward 1 in reference to grass cutting. I was informed we have met our, mat, our max in reference to uh, senior cutting, grass cutting. So the only thing I can say is I apologize for those who uh, contacted me on a, a, too late, but we do have a max that we have to cut off and we've met our max. So my apologies to you all for that. Public Works, again, like I stated, was in our ward today in Ward 1. Uh, making sure that they can uh, maintain the vacant homes and the lots. So I humbly appreciate Public Works for coming over and doing a great job. Kudos off to them. Mayor, uh, in the Kennedy Shopping Center, uh, I think 
we need to have a little bit more control in reference to where people are actually parking. People are actually parking in the no parking zone area, the fire zone area. They'll pull up to the establishment that they want to, to go to or whatever, and their cars are just parked uh, in the, uh, on the main street. It's, it's, it's just a little bit too lax. We have a lot of cars that's just speeding through there as well. So I think we're gonna have a conversation with the chiefs and see if we can kind of you know horn in on that a little bit and uh, uh, allow uh, a little bit more um, uh, uh, just get a little bit more under control, man. Yeah. Uh, and one more thing um, on Memorial Day, I had an opportunity to actually visit. Martin Luther King Park a little bit more. And I had a conversation, I had a meeting with Ms. Brown today uh, in reference to us trying to have a little bit more control over there as well. Um, thank God it was no shootings or anything of that, uh, that sort that took place over there, but it was vehicles parked all up inside the venue. Uh, of course, you know, families can come out and, you know, enjoy themselves and have a good time, but I think we need to actually have a little bit more um, plan that we can utilize to try to keep those vehicles and stuff outside the park area. And of course, the speeders uh, and Markham as well, Mayor, so thank you so much for moving forward with the speed bumps. Uh, I think that's going to be uh, an awesome thing. Uh, I'm pretty sure it will slow down a lot of the speeders that are actually in our ward. Uh, other than that, Mayor, um, that's everything for me. Well, thank you, uh, old lady uh, Hampton, and good evening, old lady McDowell. Good evening, Mayor and City Council and residents that are present on tonight. In the second ward, um, this week, I have had a chance to visit some of our new residents who, who are actually, my, I'm introducing myself to them, passing out postcards, telling them our uh, do's and our don'ts, and just welcoming them to the neighborhood. Um, and that seems to be working out really well in the second ward. Um, we're having a lot of people putting in pit bulls, so... I've been talking to them, telling them about their dogs, and I just don't understand why you would buy a house and know you don't have a gate and have a pit bull. Mm -hmm. That's kind of, um, I don't know, that's a little bit crazy. Um, also, on 157 in Oakley, the alley part, we need to clean the alleys up. Um, I, I received a phone call from some of the residents where they're coming back there and they're dumping. Um, 157th and Oakley. Oakley goes straight and then 157th and they're just dumping back there. Okay. Um, I was over there today, but I can't put my head around. I was over there in that area. I, was there something over there today? Okay. Yeah, they even pointed out the two houses of the people that are dumping. Yeah, let's, and, let's talk about that because I saw some things with parking we need to address with the Okay. We need also, we need an ordinance over there. But we talked about it. Okay. Also, um, 163rd in Winchester, I received a call from one of the residents about the sidewalks, and they are really bad, and they want to know if there's anything we can do because the kids are riding. The one little girl fell and injured herself because the sidewalks are so bad over there. Yeah, we can. Uh, I think I got a call from about that too. So we can look at that when we're okay. doing it. And also, the um, library, I sit as the liaison on the library board, and the library board members are asking if the council can please come and support them on June 18th, um, which is a Saturday from 12 to 2 for the um, June 10th. I told them that we do have other events going. But I will ask the council to see if the council can kind of split some of their time. And they're also asking any events that the councils are having in their ward, if they can invite the library. Right now, our library bus is down, um, but they're willing to bring a table, set up books. So they really want to be a part of what we're having as a council. And last, on June 25th, from 10 to 1, I'm inviting all those in Ward 1 to come out and have pancakes with your alderwoman. 
We want to do 100 strong residents. Come out. Let's hear all the new ideas that is going to take place in War Two. And I'm looking forward to seeing you. Those who have not had their booster shots or still need shots. We will have a team on hand that will be able to give out those shots that will take place at the fire station June 25th from 10 to 1. Thank you. And th thank you, Ali. I didn't mean to interject any reports, just that someone had called off about the sidewalk and I, I didn't, I, it got away from me. So okay. that's the only reason why I chimed in. So I'm sorry about that. Uh, with that, we'll go over to uh, public session. So, um, can I have a motion? So moved. All in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. Good evening, uh, uh, members of the public. Um, Madam Clerk, uh, who did you have signed in that wants to speak to the uh, council? Robert Hi. Yeah, you can go over there. That's fine. I'm Robert Hickey, I live at 316 Carolina Black Hole. And first of all, I'd like to thank you, uh, congratulate you know, for following your membership. Okay. And thank you so much for being with our community. All right. I've lived at that property for 20 years. Okay. And uh, my question is, uh, I know Bill. Well, okay. And, um, so my question is, uh, the project that they did on the creek, they um, wasn't specific in terms of what I originally agreed to like 13 years ago when we signed the contract. My property is in trust, so it's my family. And we signed over the property right to give them uh, that amount of land. Now, what Alderman Hill just mentioned was that we still own that property, but I was under the impression that I signed off 4,500 square feet of my land for the project. Okay, now when uh, those lights down, Pam can't explain everything. You know, she was the only reason that project ever got done. God bless her. Right. That um, there would not be a clear cut. There would be trees still standing, viable trees that were, you know, been there for 50 years, would still be standing. And that's not the case. They used, you know, I used to be able to walk out my back door and have nothing but trees, you know, 30, 40 feet high. Right. And now I have no. a creek full of rocks that people are cutting through my yard for the first time in 18 years mm. and playing on rocks. And my question is, how soon are they going to do the landscaping? It was supposed to be done between August and December. There still has not been one tree planted, one shrub planted. And I work for a major landscaping company. We do uh, drain tile and all that such. But um, my question is, are they going to be putting in any tree or any shrub? Because I already see erosion no. from my property. I know that you know Alderman Barron's property took the hardest hit because of how he was located on the bank. And so he lost more property than anybody. And uh, the thing is that my property floods the worst out of anything because I'm at the very corner where the creek meets <coughs> my corner of the public. And how soon are they going to put up the fence? Because when I talked to the guy from LLC, whatever, uh, IHC construction, he said, wherever there was a fence, there will be a fence. There used to be, when they put up the fence last year, it went all the way up to the concrete box where the sewer goes under the street. Well, that's no longer there. And now there's kids, just two days ago, I saw an eight year old playing around on the rocks. And what happens to me if they come through my backyard and fall down and get hurt? Now I'm in a position of liability. Mm -hmm. okay, and I've talked to many other neighbors and friends, and they want to the fence up for security reasons. And thank you for putting so many more police officers on the agenda because we definitely need safety. Yes. And um, now, as Alderman Bill said, kids are out of school. What more influx can I anticipate? You know, I mean, they use my property, you could only imagine you could walk out my backyard and not see another house. Right. Right or right across the creek. Now they put up a beautiful fence for whoever had fences, but they have not put up a fence on Central Park. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I believe that's very much a safety hazard and a security issue. Mm -hmm. So those are basically my questions. Well, uh, let me tell you this. Yeah, I have to, you know, first let me just be kind of 
reasonably brutally honest is that the city had nothing to do uh, directly with uh, the, the work there. Um, I respect that. Yeah. I know that. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that I don't care and I'm not equally concerned to the max about what you're concerned about because I am. Because everything you mentioned is right. Where I started cleaning up Central Park and putting up fence and cutting trees and everything else before they even did that and try. And I was mad that they took the fence down that I had put up. You know, it was, you know, when it's like pulling teeth to get fence up and you, and the council was, we weren't even used to doing stuff like that, you know, but I had to go out there to, to kind of do that. And they, fortunately, the council understood what I was trying to do, but I was really trying to acclimate to do things like that. So the landscaping, the tree, the shrubs, the fence, uh, I'm going to work with Alvin Barron. He knows, he knows some of the movers, if you will, that he can put in me in touch with them. We'll work on it together to get as many answers to this as we can with your fence replacement. Because we, we did some fence replacement by people on Central Park. I remember we did some of that ourselves. So um, I, I, you know, I've definitely had an issue with people cutting through people's yards. That's a big issue to me. The police department can certainly help out with patrol. And then we can also notify me and Alderman Barron to get together and we'll all notify the, the neighbors about, you know, hey, your kids can't go through people's property. Well, you know, this, the kids coming out the school bus is shorter for them to come down my street right. and walk through my yard. Well, I'm well, we'll talk, you know, we'll talk in the neighborhood. We need to talk to the school and the bus company, uh, the whole nine. We'll do that. You know, I mean, I, mean, I, I will plant, I will take care of all the plants, all the trees that need to be done. Okay. Because I need to be able to plant the trees. You, 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 you deserve. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll work with you on it. Uh, I'll get with Alvin Barron and uh, I'll just need to get your, your number before you go tonight. We'll be in touch about it. We'll work on it. Yeah. I, I, hey, I, I, it's summertime. You want your tranquility like everybody else. No, no. I, I want to. Now that I don't have all the trees, I can start putting the greenhouses up and stuff because I can use my property to plant all the greenhouses. Yeah. Right. For nothing. And mm -hmm. I would just like to be able to see the sun with people to try to Absolutely. Uh, I'll make sure I reach out to you right now. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. You bet. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Hi, good evening. First, I would like to commend you before I put in my complaint. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Soften the blow. Very pleased when I walked down 159th Street. I moved here about 15 years ago. Mm. When I walked down 159th Street, it looked like a dump. Just trash everywhere. And I complained to the uh, fire mayor about the appearance, and I was very uh, pleased during the holidays that Marco, you know, decided to even decorate 159th. Very proud of my street, of my community, because this is a hub. You know, we're okay. in between, or at least I'm in between two uh, major expressways, the toll and then 157. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, my claim is, I talked to Alderman Barron today. I was not aware that the easement was my responsibility. So I'm going to follow up and check because that's an awful lot to do. The easement <coughs> where I live is overgrown not from just from the corner, but all the way down. It's just bad. And the only reason that I've never complained to the city about doing anything, because I've had issues also with people coming into my yard, people mm -hmm. breaking into my uh, garage mm -hmm. and taking things out. Mm -hmm. So I said, hey, an overgrown easement, I'm not going to worry about that because mm -hmm. it's a security issue. Mm -hmm. There's no, you know, gate. Mm -hmm. But I do have one concern with overgrown weeds where they're in plain view. I have a garden that I plant every year 
uh, on the side of my garage and on the side of my neighbor's fence, which I'm told is part of that property is mine. But anyhow, further toward her home, she does not bother to cut her weeds. She lets them grow like big tall bushes. And it just makes my property look really bad, mm -hmm. being that I'm trying to maintain. I'm not the only one, I believe, on the whole block that even has my, uh, my yard treated. Mm -hmm. Well, I also have concerns, and I said, maybe she doesn't think that there's a problem with it because I walked further down, 157, and I noticed the community center, and I noticed our park. It needs trimming. Mm -hmm. The bushes below the wall <coughs> where they're climbing up the gate. Mm -hmm. And I would like to know when we can get to that and we can do something to beautify our park. Because I used to, before the pandemic, I used to take walks across I 57. And you notice they have a beautiful a playground for the children. That's not the case where I live. Uh, the bushes are overgrown. I said the weeds are overgrown. And I was told a few years ago that they had plants for that part that they were going to revitalize it. Mm -hmm. And they were going to do something with the gate. And I'd just like to know if we could just clean up my community. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to take walks. And when I take walks, I want to see beautiful flowers, beautiful trees, beautiful birds. But right now, I'm not getting it from my community. And I would just like to advocate that we do something to just beautify Marco, uh, just continue the work that we started. I have an abandoned building on my block with overgrown weeds and grass, and then there's a lot that's overgrown that needs to be tended to. And I would like to know if that can be taken care of because. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm very particular, I'm very funny about the way things look, and I'm embarrassed when I have individuals coming to visit me. Mm -hmm. I generally ask them not to turn down that major street of 159. I ask them to turn down Central Park when they're coming down 150, uh, when they're getting off 159. Right. Because I don't want my right. family and friends to see that, that end. Mm -hmm. So I would just like to know if we could finish beautifying marbles because our property values have not come back up like they have in other areas. And I think it has something to do with the condition of the community. Um, I, uh, I, you know, I didn't ask, so I won't ask, One, but I'll wait until we're done. Uh, okay. I'll get this to you offline. Uh, me, you, and all of them, we'll get together on <coughs> these are things that are well within our reach. So, you know, these are things that, um, you know, there's, there's no excuse for it. So they're within our reach. We can definitely tell you why something is not happening, uh, but it's not an excuse. It's just uh, the reality of whatever's going on. But there, it's in our reach to straighten it out. It's not hard. Um, the building, taking that building down is something that um, I'm going to talk with the council about uh, because we're, we've got a couple of projects that, uh, I'm going to approach the council about with the police department building and the public work building with expansion in the future and the same, <clears throat> a lot of money to, to do that. I've been talking to finance, we've got people come out, meet with the board about it. We want to try and take down that building. And so what that does, maybe we'll get the nice townhomes or something like that over there mm -hmm. or over 55 community gated. We've got, we've got ideas mm -hmm. to try and make that area really nice. So really sorry about the park too, because the park, we, we, we had a whole thing going with the park we could probably get with Mr. Champion and we add that to put it at the top of the list to do that small park. Um, I saw the kids out there playing a little basketball at one point, a little bit, I thought we were kind of keeping up with it. So we got to get back on our, on our course and take care of that. So let's get together uh, later on. Uh, I'll get your information. Uh, you know, we do it all. Stay in touch, and we'll help straighten it out. It's not a hard lift. And, and I like to ask questions once again about the easement. Let's say I find out just my property is not being used, and I'm going to 
You know, I, 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 make, I want to make this clear, and I think all of us understand this. And I'll, I'll say it because, you know, as you take your seat, if you want, I'm saying this for everybody. We are in the business, whether we choose it or not, but we did choose it, I'm making everybody like that. That's, that. that's what we're here for. You know, we're trying to make everybody a standard of living and a quality of life for people. So that's what we do. I mean, if we, we, we wouldn't be here, or we shouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. If we're not really, that's what, what our goal is every day we come here, is to try and make our life better. And we realized that that's why we ran. So we, we said, you know, some things, because I, I was at points and I tell people, and I know that there's other council members will say this, and you can take this, which we hope to spread. You know, there were places I know for me, if, and I'm sure the other all of them could say this and so there were places I was going to move. Mm -hmm. I'm the mayor, and I'm telling you that. I'm telling you because if this doesn't get better, I'm part of the solution. I'm making it better. I'm not staying here. Mm -hmm. So I will help you fix your problem. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, you will. Okay. Um, was that it? Yeah. All right. Stay after the meeting. I, will get, I just want to get your number. and I got your address, but I want to get your number. And me, you, and all of them, we'll hook up. Okay. Uh, motion to close the meeting to the public. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, ayes have it. Looks like we just have uh, number 14 who wants to. <laughs> the motion that we adjourn the meeting. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Good night, everyone.